Hello and welcome to another update video about Bitcoin. Really only quick update. Bitcoin did recover a little bit since it uh, bounced off the trend line here again. It really seems to be moving in some kind of a triangle, which is not too much of a surprise on a Saturday. So yeah, it might it might eventually become this ABCDE triangle that I highlighted earlier in the video today, but it's actually a little bit too early to label it because we don't really have a strong confirmation that it really is a triangle. You don't normally want to label a triangle prematurely um, because in the end, you know, this could just be something different. An Elliott, for, for an Elliott wave triangle, you need an A wave, a B wave, and we really only have two at the moment, right? So then you need a C wave, a D wave, and an E wave. So yeah, you don't normally want to label that too too early. As soon as you have ABC and it doesn't follow through to the downside impulsively, well, then you can think about labeling it as a triangle for now. I keep it up here, but you uh, you know that we've talked about that uh, whole idea of an Elliott wave triangle. Um. What else is there? Well, this is still corrective mass, okay. Um, we still have the two possibilities here. Unchanged, I have to repeat it, uh, it is what it is. You know, I, I, I need to repeat it because there are always new viewers. Um, the idea that we bottomed here on the 10th of March um, in this wave two, yeah, that, I mean, we've, we've been talking about that. Yeah, we basically called a bottom here with this first of all trend reversal area and then remember what we talked about i did have a comment in in one of the last videos saying indicators are much better guide than than elliott wave or something similar but yeah we you know that's the point we, we did use the relative strength index around the 10th of march to call for a bottom and i think a day after it bottomed um the reason is that the daily RSI is one of the <laughs> the OG signals for for Bitcoin. It works really well. The over oversold ranges, yeah, I did explain it at the time that typically when you get into the oversold range on the daily, and we did that here on the 10th or 11th of March, and that was our bottom signal in addition to our trend reversal area. So no, it it wasn't the indicator alone. It was the combination of Elliott wave our FIB levels plus the daily RSI being oversold that we could call a bottom and within 24 hours it actually rallied. Um, I do like to use the RSI to use or to look for um, divergences and to look for oversold areas on the daily. Overbought is basically useless on the Bitcoin chart but oversold is a very useful OG indicator, um, very helpful. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, and then we highlighted that we are rallying into resistance. So highlighted to you that I switched my trading bot off for now, just to see what Bitcoin does. Didn't want to lose all that profit that it made on the way up from 23K to around about 28. So um, just want to see now what it's doing and then we'll make decisions accordingly. Um, we are certainly in a situation where it's looking fairly bullish in my opinion, as long as at least 21,550 is holding. So this is the support range. I actually have it split out into two separate support areas, depending on the two different wave counts we have here, either that all of this was a wave one and we're gonna come down in something like a large A wave, a B wave and the C wave, or, and that's sort of what I imminently focus on. It's not necessarily the primary, but it's what I imminently focus on is that we have a one, two, one, two setup. So what does it mean? We've got two scenarios that are bullish, um, one with a shallow retracement zone, one with a deeper one, basically forms you and gives you one large support area. And if I have one that is shallow and if I have one that is deeper, I would typically trade for the one that is deeper. The reason is that if you trade for the one that is shallow and uh, you, you just might get stopped out, right? And then what, what might happen? You set your stop loss below that 78.6 retrace at uh, around about 24,940 year. <laughs> then it just jumps down to 24,120 and starts to rally and you get chopped out. So that's why I, in these situations, tend to trade the entire area yeah, and trade for the one uh, that goes down deeper. Basically, that's where I would set my stop, stop loss but I personally actually am looking for the entire range all the way down to around about 17 and a half K, yeah, which is, um, I think, reasonable in terms of just giving it more space. Um, but that's only my strategy as a pullback trader. I haven't started to scale in again 
um, just because Bitcoin is consolidated, consolidating on such a high level. So I took some profits, obviously, with um, with the trading bot, with my spot positions here. But my core position plus a little bit of this floating position is still there. I'm talking about the positions that I entered down here. So it's if we come down a bit lower, which I hope actually, then I will add more to those positions. If it continues to rally, not a problem. I'm very well positioned with my hardware wallet positions and the core position and the remainder of the floating position. Because as I said before, this was the area that was very relevant for me to scale in to buy, which is what I did um, together with some altcoins, even though the altcoins are a bit weak at the moment, but we'll see, you know, it's, um, it's all going in cycles, Bitcoin strength and then altcoin strength. Yeah, what else can I add? Not much more, you know, um, other than what I said on the Bitcoin, no, in the Ethereum video that, you know, instead of asking, you know, do you think it's going to go into the orange box or the yellow box? Uh, you need to ask yourself, does it really matter from a strategic point of view? Does it matter from a trading point of view? Does it matter from a tactical point of view? For me, it doesn't because it's all about scaling into support. If the support is further way down or you're not entirely sure, I mean, the idea is it at least would be reasonable, in my opinion, to look for the entire area for scaling in. Of course, still adhering to position sizing. Yeah, so it doesn't really make a difference how large the support area is as long as you make sure that you don't oversize and have the correct position size and make sure that you know where you set your stop loss. But um, yeah, I think in crypto, it's sometimes important to give the trade a bit more space, trade smaller, but give it more space. Um, don't over leverage and uh, you should be fine. You should be doing well, right? Um, I, did, um, I did highlight that earlier today. Let me just see if I find that post actually. It's about, you know, if, if you struggle with trading, try to scale, size down and leave trades more space. You know, at least try it and make a lot with little, get consistent and the money will come. You know, that's what many people don't do. So many people, that's why most people lose in trading. It is, it is, it is what it is, right? You know, 90% of traders just lose, but um, most people, and that's the reality, oversize, they take too much leverage on, they go all in, all out instead of scaling, you know, and that it's just the basics. But um, a lot of people, it, it's it's a hard emotional game. You know, it's more than it's you know you need to be disciplined and and things like that. So it's all about sometimes giving the trade a bit more space, especially in crypto in a highly volatile envir environment. Um, that is what I think is important. But that's just my my view. You know, it's not financial advice. I can only give you some food for thought, really. All right, so let's see. It's still caught in the range. A bit of a boring Saturday, as expected. And let's see if we get some more action tomorrow, especially towards the weekly candle close. Tomorrow, um, 5 p.m. UTC. Again, our member live stream tomorrow, we're going to talk about, well, it's actually today in the UK, uh, we're going to talk about the right, the right trading mindset. So if that's a topic that interests you, check out the channel membership. You will be able to join that live stream and watch all the previous recordings of all of our educational live streams um, as a member. Okay, that's my update. Hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then please check out the channel membership. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye bye.